Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be discussing dividend stocks. We're going to be going over the best dividend stocks going ex-dividend September 24th through the 28th, 2018. So every week I release an article here. We have five stocks going ex-dividend next week that kind of made the list this week. We'll discuss the credentials or the screening process. So we have ticker symbol B-A-N-F, this is the Bank First Corp, ticker symbol ELS, the Equity Lifestyle Properties. We have ticker symbol MDT, which is the Medtronic. We have ticker symbol POR, which is Portland General Electric here in Oregon, where I'm located at. And we have ticker symbol RSG, which is the Republican Services. So those are the five stocks we're going to be discussing in this article. Now, what we screen these stocks for, we initially wanted a yield greater than 1.5. So if you're investing $100 into these, you're going to get $1.50 for the entire year back from the dividends or higher which we'll discuss here in the articles it has different yields all the stocks have a little different yields but we wanted a minimum there of 1.5 yield this allows us to get down into that range where some of those growth dividend stocks such as apple nvidia starbucks activision blizzard trade at a lot of those are all of those are actually dividend payers, but they have a low yield because they're still growing their company. They're reinvesting a lot of their earnings back into their company. I also would like to see over the last 10 years that these companies have had rising revenue, net income and free cash flow and that price going forward, their P.E. ratio is expected to decrease, meaning that their earnings for the next um, the next year are actually going to be greater than the current year and that they've grown their dividend at least five years or more some of these here that we're going to be discussing have been growing their dividends for over 10 years and i believe one of them has had it for 40 years so we're going to cover their dividend dates their ex-dividend the price comparison to yield pe comparison to the industry and the s p 500 the payout ratio the dividend history and a few other items so if you have not got started in your investment journey i highly suggest m1 finance Open up a Roth IRA, it's a tax sheltered account where you don't have to pay any taxes until you're 59 and a half and then it's completely tax free and you can always withdraw your original investment. But that is all covered in other videos. So here, all these stocks are ordered by X dividends September 24th through the 28th, 2018. So here, the first one going ex-dividend is Portland. This is the Portland General Electric. They engage in the generation, purchase, transmission, and distribution of electricity in the state of Oregon. Their ex-dividend date is on the 24th of September. That's next Monday. So if you wanted to buy this one for the ex-dividend date, you would have to buy it on Friday or prior. You would then get paid out on the 15th of October. Here is their 10-year chart. So you can take their percentages over the past 10 years divided by 10 and that gives you their average per year. So for example here we have their price up 111.9% over the past 10 years. That would come out to 11.19% over you know on uh, average per year. So they, they kept up with the S&P 500 average of 7 to 10%. So this one had an about 11% return per year for the past 10 years. Whereas their other, now this is the utility company, so a lot of their growth as far as their revenue, free cash flow, their net income here, the revenue here is only at 10.6%, which is an increase of 1.06% increase at, on average for a year. So very minimal, but it's a utility company, so you could kind of count them as sort of a monopoly because people have to use them, they're government regulated, some someone some new entity can't just you know pop up and appear and begin to take their business now portland general electric when i captured this they were trading well they're still paying out 36 point 36 and a a fifth of a cent there per share each quarter they're currently priced at 46 dollars and 98 cents currently they did go down when i pulled the report they're currently yielding a roughly a 2.9, 3.08% yield. Their current PE is at a 21.88 and their forward PE is at a 20.26. So there again, they're expected to grow their earnings, decrease in their PE ratio there slightly. Their current price to book here is at 1.7 and their current price to sales is at 2.1. Very large company. They have a whole lot of equipment there. So when charted, it does show the current stock does have a higher price over yield, which may indicate it may be overvalued at this time. But here, 
They're currently traded at 46.98, so that would put them right around here. And their new yield's probably around about 3.10. So this is actually the correct area here, but that's still slightly over the current average for the year. Now, stock is trading above the industry average of 19 and below the S&P 500 average of 25.03 when I captured this. They have a payout ratio higher than 60. I like to have 60 and below. It's sort of like a healthy dividend yield or a payout ratio. This one has a 62% payout ratio, so only slightly higher. And they've grown their dividend for the past 12 years. Their price to book is at a 1.7, which has put them below 3.0, where value investors would consider that them a value. So again, kind of recap, PE Industries, dividend yield is currently right around 3.10, 3.08. Annualized payout, if you were to multiply 0.36 by 4, that would put them at $1.45 per share for the entire year. Payout ratio, 62%. Dividend growth, 12 years here. Same sort of information. Numbers two stock going X dividend is ticker symbol MDT. This is the Medtronic. They engage in the development, manufacturing, and marketing of device-based medical therapies worldwide. The firm aims to produce products to alleviate pain, restoring health, and extending life for people with chronic conditions. They're going to be going X dividend next Thursday on the 27th of September. So you got to buy this one on Wednesday or prior. You would then get the payout on the 19th of October. So here they have a little bit better numbers here as far as their 10-year goes. They've increased their dividend you can see 166% over the past 10 years. That's an average increase per year of 16.6%. So very nice. Here in the red is their revenue up 10.5% on average per year. In the orange, they have their price. Now their price has been trading sort of sideways since 2015. You could sort of say it has been trading sideways. A lot of their growth came between 2009 and about 2015. From this point, they have had some growth, but you know, it's been trading sideways for the most part. They've had an increase of around 9.2% on average per year. Free cash flow up 7.3% on average per year and net income 4.6%. So all around pretty good company. Now this one did go up slightly since I've taken this here. So they're currently, they pay out 50 cents per share each quarter. They're currently priced at $96.88, putting them a little bit above where I had recorded them at. Their current yield is around 2.08 to 1.96, right within that range. Their current PE is at a 41.56. Their forward PE is expected to go down to 18.75. That's a very nice drop there. Their current price to sales is at a 4.3, and their current price to book is at a 2.58. So very low. Good looking numbers all around there. One chart that does show the current stock does have a higher price over yield which may indicate it may be overvalued at this current time. The stock is also, or the stock is below the industry average of 72.6, very high there, and it is sitting above the S&P 500 average of 25.03. So this one, while it does have a current PE of around 21.5, 21, or I'm sorry, 41.5, 41.4, the forward PE puts them at a 18.75, which puts them below, way below the industry average and below the S&P 500. So going forward, if this, if this company continues to earn, grow their earnings and their, their revenue, this one should be fairly valued here very shortly or at a very nice point here. So, they are sitting below 60% payout ratio. They have a 39.1% payout ratio, which is very nice. And they've had dividend growth for the past 40 years, meaning that they're recession-proof. They've continued to increase and pay out a dividend for the past 40 years. Their price to book is at four or 2.5. This I, I wrote down the wrong number there. It's actually at 2.5, which is below 3.0, where value investors would consider a value. So again, price uh, current PE is expected to drop down to 18.75, which puts them in a very nice position. Current dividend yield is around 2.08. They pay out two dollars per share for the entire year a low payout ratio of 39.1 and dividend growth for the past 40 years. So all around pretty good looking stock there. And number three, we have ticker symbol BANF. This is Bank First. They operate as a holding company for Bank First, which provides a large, a range of retail and commercial banking services over in Oklahoma. Their ex-dividend is Thursday, 
the 27th of September. You would then get paid out on October 15th. If you were to purchase them on Wednesday or prior, you would then get the X dividend then on Thursday. So this company, triple digit growth there across multiple. So increase in dividend by around 17%. You can see a very nice large increase here. That's when the regulations for the financials kind of got decreased. They could actually have less cash on hand. So they in increase a lot of companies, the financial institutions, increase their dividend by a very nice amount this uh, this last year. I know JP Morgan and a few others, I believe they increased their dividends by some 30%. So here, very nice jump there, up 17.2% on average for the past 10 years. In the green, free cash flow up 16%. In the orange, their price is up 144% over the past 10 years. That's an average return of 14.4%. Net income up 11.11 or 17 percent there on average per year. So interesting, great looking numbers all around. Very steady growth. There's a spike here, but this is their free cash flow. Now during the recession here, free cash flow of course went down. Maybe they had some mortgages or something. Something swung up there. But for the most part, this company is very slow and steady in the upwards in the upwards movement. So here. This is their one-year chart. They pay out $0.30 cents per share each quarter. They're currently priced at $60.75. They did increase slightly here today. Their current yield sits around 1.98. So this shows 1.39. If you were to multiply, let's go ahead and bust out my handy-dandy calculator. If we were to multiply 0 0.30, which is their quarterly dividend, multiply that by 4, that puts them at a payout of $1.20 per share. You divide that by the current stock price, which is 60.75, multiply that by 100, and that gives you that current yield of 1.97, which is actually way up in this range up here. So when I did this here, we'll, we'll go over here. I show it as an undervalued. So uh, current PE is at a 19.77, forward PE is at a 16.43, price of sales at a 5.4. Five and a price to book at a 2.29. So one chart that does show the current stock does have a higher yield to price because their yield based off their new dividend payout here, they increased their dividend from 21 cents to 30 cents. That's a very nice increase there. So 0 0.3 minus 0 0.21 divided by 0 0.21. That's an increase of 42% and their dividend yield. So that's a huge increase there. Let's see here. Their current stock is above the industry of 15.7. They're at a 19.8. Their forward PE is at a 16.43, which is slightly above the industry average, but below the S&P 500 average. They are sitting below 60% payout ratio at a 32.7, and have had dividend growth for the past 16 years. So they started paying out a dividend since 2002, and they continue to raise and pay out a dividend through the recession back in 08, 09 area. Their price to book value is at a 2.29, which is below 3.0, where value investors would consider a value. So kind of recap, they're sitting right around a 1.98, you know, 2% dividend yield right now, which puts them at a very nice position, especially with that hike. This new payout here that's coming out, it's going to be their new payout. So if you were to buy into the stock prior to going ex-dividend, you're going to get a very nice boost there. Annualized payout is $1.20 per share. Their payout ratio is 32.7, and they've had dividend growth for the past 16 years, making them pretty recession-proof. Number four, we have ticker symbol ELS. This is the equity lifestyle property. They own and operate an interest in hundreds of quality properties in 28 states in British Columbia, consisting of 112,000 sites. The company is a self-administered, self-managed real estate investment trust, or REIT, with headquarters in Chicago. So I like to include some REITs in here. So this one's going X dividend again next Thursday, 27th of September. If you were to buy this one on Wednesday or prior, have it for the X dividend date. You would then get paid out on the 12th of October. Here we can see some very nice numbers here. The in the purple net income up 70 or 783% over the past 10 years. So very nice spike here. You know, if they were buying up houses, this is a REIT. So if they were buying up a lot of in, you know real estate between 2012 and 2015, they've had a huge increase there in their net income, which is helping them out. 
Here in the blue, their dividend has increased by 450% or about, what is that, 45%? on average per year, that's very nice. Their price is up 281% for the past 10 years. That beats out the S&P 500. I believe the S&P 500 is around a 260% price, so this is the 28% increase on average per year for this REIT. In the green, their free cash flow up 9.9% on average per year, or 99% over the past 10 years, and their revenue up 49.2% on average per year over the last 10 years. Now this is a REIT, so revenue, a lot of times they like to write off as much as they can and they, they pay out, their payout ratio is pretty high because you know they have to meet certain requirements in order to be a REIT. So here, they currently pay out 55 cents per share each quarter, up from around 48 and some change. They're currently priced at $96.79. As of this recording, they did go down slightly today. Their current dividend yield sits between a 2.27 and 2.14, probably a little bit higher. 2.27 is like right up in this range. They're right about break even in that value point. Their current PE is at a 42.75, and their forward PE isn't showing up on this data either because it may be high, it may be low. I'm not sure where it's showing, but it's not showing. It's just it's not. It doesn't have enough room there in the graph to meet the certain requirements there. So maybe it's not shown there. Current price of sales is at a 19 or 9.7 and price of book is at a 8.36. So when charted, does show the current stock does have a higher price over yield, which may indicate it may be overvalued at this point. Stock is trading above the industry average of 24 or 25.4 and above the S&P 500 average of 25.4. So here, PE is at a 42.75, 42.9, depending on the day. Payout ratio is below 60%, which is surprising for a REIT at 56.4. And they've had dividend growth for the past seven years. Price of the book, again, 8.3, which is which is actually above. i got to correct that. And here, just kind of recapping all their data. They pay out $2.20 per share each year. So, you know, a lot of REITs have these, you know, higher yields. Some REITs I see like a 5, 6, 7% or higher. This one has a pretty steady 2.14% yield and kind of an interesting one there. So, number five on our list is ticker symbol RSG, the Republican Services. It provides non hazardous solid waste services in the United States. It offers waste collection services through commercial, industrial, municipal, residential customers through via huh, collections in 40 states in Puerto Rico. So, they're going ex dividend on Friday, the 28th of September. Their payout is the 15th of October. So, here you would have to buy this one next Thursday or prior. The be eligible for the payout on the 15th of October. So this one, dividend increased about 9.7% on average per year, so still pretty strong. Let's start at the top here. So net income up 37% on average per year, or 372% over the past 10 years. In the green, free cash flow up 266% for the past 10 years, about 26% on average per year. You can just do the math, divide these by 10, you'll get your average per year. So 211% on their revenue, 151% on their price. So their price is up about 15% there. So that's a very solid return on your investment per year. Now, if we're looking at their one-year chart, they pay out around 37.5 cents there per share each quarter. They're currently priced at $75.45. Their current yield sits around 2%. We can see that they have an increase here recently, which puts them a little bit higher. This this data ha hasn't really uh, bumped up. So they're currently sitting right around this area here, which puts them with a yield over price. Their current PE is at a 24.61. Forward PE is at a 18.55. Price of book is at a 3.11. Price of sales at a 2.4. So when charted, it does show the current stock does have a higher yield over price, which puts, uh, which may indicate it may be overvalued or fairly valued at this time. The stock is trading below the industry average and below the S&P 500 average. So industry is at a 20.9, S&P at a 25.03. Payout ratio is below 60%. They're sitting at a 49.3% payout ratio, and as have 
dividend growth for the past eight years. Their price to book value is at a 3.11, which is slightly above the 3.0 range where value investors would consider a value. So here, recap again, low payout ratio, annualized payout $1.50 per share each quarter each year and they've been raising their dividend since 2010 they're out of the recession i believe this company did lock their recession during the pullback but not a hundred percent sure there so if you guys would like to check out this article i do have links in the description below and also in the comment section you guys can check out the article let me know your feedback in the comment section if you do like the article you have any friends that like to research and read about dividend stocks, go ahead and share this with them. Share it on your Facebook, your Twitter, and other social media platforms. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor or tax professional. The information provided is my opinion for entertainment and fun. This is just me as a financial investor trying to help others make their money work for them. And if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know in the comment section below. Out of all of these here that we covered today, I believe that the most fairly valued here at the current time looks like RSG, but at the same time, if I was going for a long-term approach, I would probably look at MDT just because it has that solid dividend growth of the past 40 years. I know they're going to continue to pay out a, you know, through a recession, have a very low payout ratio while their yield initially may not be too high sitting at a round. What was there? Actually, I believe that's actually higher now. It's the, the current, you pay out $2 per share, 2 divided by 96.88, multiply by 100. Okay, so that's correct. 2.06 is the current dividend yield. It doesn't, you know, they're currently trading above where their average is for the year. But if you're going for the long term, while this price may be slightly high, you can see that they have risen off their median price here very high. I could expect them to fall back to an $85 point where I would probably be more reasonable buy. But if you're looking for the long term, I think MDT would be a great buy. Otherwise, if you're looking for, you know, something to invest in for the short term, like one to five years, that looking slightly undervalued, but has really good growth potential, check out ticker symbol RSG. So that is it for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you do did like the video, hit that thumbs up button below. I highly appreciate it. And thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.